I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Hello, and welcome to Rama Praise. We're so glad to have you with us today. This is uh, going to be a great time. And before we talk about it, honey, there's a special day, your birthday, September the 3rd, uh, 1939, you entered this world. That's right. On a Sunday. 7 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock. <laughs> I remember it. No, I right. don't. My dad told me. <laughs> that's why I say that, because he told me that. Yes, and so uh, we just say happy, happy birthday. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You know, we, we talked to you back in August about our camp meeting that we had back in, uh, in July, last of July, last of July mm -hmm. and it was a great camp meeting. It, yes. was, it, was, uh, it was our 50th year of camp meeting. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, it, there was a video that was created oh my. that recapped the 50 years of camp meeting. And I want to invite you to go to our website and watch that video. It, 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 it is, it's just great as far as I'm concerned. And if you've been a follower of this ministry, you, 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 uh, you will really enjoy it. And even if you haven't, you will enjoy yes. it. So you go to rhema.org forward slash timeless teachings and it'll be right there. You go and watch that video. I know you're going to really you know, like that. You know, honey, our daughter, Denise, was in charge of yes. getting that all put together and she would not even let us be the video until, until we saw it that, that night. night. And oh my goodness, I had to have lots of Kleenex. Yes. <laughs> it, was it brought so, back lots of memories. It brought back lots of memories. And yes. it's such a video, a good video. I invite you to go and watch yes. it. Hey, this month, hon, we're going to share some stories of faith yes. with you. Yes. In fact, I, I'm going to be talking about faith in mm -hmm. my message. And I trust that these testimonies will really minister to you and encourage you yes. to particularly believe God, learn to believe God. When you have and challenges. When you have challenges. Yes. God always wants to bless you. He always wants to help you, and he will answer if you, if you... Uh, just ask. <laughs> just ask, yes, yeah. Yes, You know... Uh, and, you know, honey, today you're talking about... Yeah, you know, we live by faith. Yes. Living by faith is something we have to do every day. We, actually, in the natural, we live by faith. Yes, I absolutely. Mean, I came on this set and sat out in this chair believing that it that would hold me hold up. You up. Yes. I didn't check it to see if it was stable or anything because I believed the chair would hold me up. I went out and got in my car and started it believing that the car was going to start. That's natural faith. Yes. But you obtain the promises of God by faith. Mm -hmm. it, the Bible says that uh, the just shall, shall live, live by, by faith. faith. That's right. And then, and then it says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. So having faith enables you to, to walk in the, into the promises of God. Yes. And, and obtain the victory that you want to obtain. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you know, the, the enemy tries to come in though. Oh yeah. He, oh, yes. he, he has a way of gradually eroding uh -huh. your faith so we have to learn to walk firmly in yes. faith, knowing that God will fulfill what he promised. Right. So, you know, before we go to my message, I want you to watch Amy's story of faith. It will inspire you and encourage you to yes. trust God no matter what your situation. She shares a story of the courage as she stood and believed God yes. for her Baby, baby to live <laughs> to live and be healthy yes so why don't we go right now into that testimony all right hi my name is amy dunnick and this is my story of faith so when um i was in school this would have been my first year of school we got pregnant for our second and I started having difficulties with the pregnancy. 
and kind of late in the first trimester and then into the second trimester I was having symptoms that were painting a picture that I would likely lose the baby. In fact, the, the consultation from the doctor was that he thought I was going through the process of, of losing the baby. Of course, you kind of like, I'm not gonna let my mind go, go there. And uh, you just think it's something that's gonna, I'm just gonna get over, but the days go by and it's still there. And of course it gets harder and things like fear and worry and maybe you would even say anguish. I, I think that's a real feeling that I'm gonna say moms, but parents can feel at the prospect of losing a child, even a, a, an unborn child, you know, through, through a miscarriage. I remember crying out to the Lord like you do when you, you hear something like that and your body's experiencing symptoms that you know are not good. And I heard from him, the baby's fine. It was just very simple. I latched a hold of that as a word from the Lord, a rhema word. And through the next weeks, those symptoms continued. At the same time though, it seemed like to me, every church service and every rhema class and every Christian radio station that I turned on was talking to me about the fruitfulness of the womb, <laughs> producing seed in the right time, building up my faith. In fact, this morning, thinking about sharing this, I went to my, my Rhema notes and you know how one of my classes, Old Testament men of faith, for a solid months, the teacher talked about barrenness, productivity, spiritual fruitfulness, fruitfulness in your life in other areas, on and on. And I went and looked in other classes too, and it was the same thing. It was be like blood covenant and talking about that, you know. And God was so good to me to encourage my faith that again, even at the same time my body was doing something that was saying, this is over, my spirit was getting built up in faith. Come another, you know, five months after that, our son Hans was born three days before his due date. Eight pounds, 13 ounces, big boy, healthy and well. I, of course, our greatest gratitude and all glory goes to the Lord for his faithfulness to work in us, to plant the seed in us and of the word and allow the seed to bear fruit, but then also to be able to bear a son, to have a son that I, I felt like I was in a faith fight. I felt like I could have let go of him, but the word coming to me and strengthening me through Rama Bible Church, through the Rama classes, helped me hold on. You know, it's something that even today he's 32 years old and I can look at him and there he is. He is, he was born. I'm so grateful to the Lord and to Rama. Rhema Bible Church, Rhema Bible Training Center, and the Hagen family that's founded this, built this, stood by it, made sure that it continued. So grateful. Oh, honey, that was an awesome, awesome testimony. Yes. You know, it just makes tears of joy come down my face. Yes, because we, we know, uh, Amy, and we know, yes. we know uh, Hans, yes. and we know the family. That's right. Yes. Yes. And, you know, uh, God's faithful. He is so faithful. And God loves people. He wants to bless his children like we parents want yes. to bless our children. Today, Amy's son Hans is just perfect. He's yes. a great young man. Yes, he is. And, you know, before I go to the message, let me say to you, if you happen to have a testimony of from this program or from in reading any of our material yes. or being in any of our services, uh, we would like for you to share it with us. Just go to, on the computer, go to testimonies at rhema.org and share that with us. We, we like yes, to hear, we'd hear love this. To hear it. We love to hear this. Now, let's go to where I'm doing the message. 
We live by faith. We talk about faith all the time. But, you know, some people, they go to conference or meeting or maybe even just to church and they have some type of mountaintop experience, you know, and uh, then they, they go home changed by the power of God. You know, but life doesn't stop just because uh, the conference is over. You can't build your life on one mountaintop experience or even several mountaintop experiences. You know, we have to realize that it's great to have these kind of, of events then some people just use it, that's, a, that's that mountaintop experience, that's a once in a lifetime bill and they're always looking back and talking about it. But uh, that's all in the past. Life just doesn't stop because you've had some great experience, spiritual experiences. You know, we are told in the word of God that we walk by faith. Now that's an everyday experience, not just uh, at this conference or at this meeting or at that meeting. And you know, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. The new living says we live by believing and not seeing. I want you to notice in these two verses that we see in one translation, we see walk. Another one, we see live. So actually, you could interchange live or walk by faith. And you may hear me do that during this sermon because I'm going to talk we live about we live by faith. You know, this is something that we do every day. It's something that we do on a regular, ongoing basis. Now, I know many of you have a workout schedule. How many of you have a workout schedule? That's something you do on a regular basis. Am I correct? How many of you have a job? Yeah. And that's a regular thing to do. You see, every day living by faith is routine. Every day. What happens to you in your workouts if you miss two or three days? You get behind. You have to do catch up. Well, there are many people that do that with their faith. They just sort of coast along until a crisis comes and then they have to rebuild their faith in order to meet that crisis. My dad always said, keep your faith strong because if you don't, you'll get weak. It's like a muscle. It can't do what it used to do because you have not been regularly keeping it in shape. So, Say it with me. Living by faith is a daily routine experience. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. Now, uh, we're always quoting that. 11 1, but we don't quote 11 2 very often. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. New Living says faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It's the evidence of things we not, cannot see. Through, faith, through their faith, the people in the days of old earned a good reputation. Everybody's always talking about faith, but 
if you read that second, it says these old patriarchs of the word of God, they obtained this by their faith. By living by faith, you will lay hold of the unseen things and begin to see the promises of God begin to take a hold in your life. The saints of old live by faith and received his promises. You can go on down and read that on down in that 11th chapter there. And you'll say that, see that Abel gave an offering by faith, Enoch pleased God by faith, Noah obeyed God by faith, Abraham by faith, Abraham left the country to go where God told him to go and he didn't even know where he's going and God just said go. That's hard to do. Sarah received strength to bear a child in her old age by faith. Moses uh, forsook the riches of Egypt and led the Israelites toward the promised land. All of that, I'm just, I'm just paraphrasing the, the scripture that you would go ahead and read after I quoted those two. Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau by faith. Jacob worshiped God by faith. Joseph gave instructions to, uh, to bury him in faith by faith. Uh, in, in the promised land. Uh, by faith, Rahab did not perish in Jericho. In addition to this, if you go on reading there, in 11, uh, 11 uh, 32 through 36, and what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and Samson and Jephna, and also of David, Samuel, and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked, righteous, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. I want you to notice that these are the people here that walked or lived by faith. Are y'all there? Y'all going home? Y'all off of quiet? I'm going to be like Brother Bill. I think I ought to be getting some amens now. <laughs> As I read this, you see these people live by faith by believing what God told them and doing what God told them. They live by faith by speaking what God told them. They live by faith by following the directions that God gave them. You know, Hebrews 11 is called the Faith Hall of Fame. Hey, God is still inducting people into the Faith Hall of Fame. If you want to get your name in the Hall of Fame, then... Uh, you got to do what these people did, live by faith. You know, in 2000, I received a, a, a packet from Canyonville Bible Academy where I went to high school my junior year, just one year there. And uh, for, for running track for them in 1957, I was inducted into their high school hall of fame. That's a good honor, but hey, I want this honor. This is the honor that's going to really mean something. You know, <laughs> these people accomplish reading after these and studying some of these names that you read in that 11th chapter. You will find that they accomplished the, impos the impossible. There were things that seemed impossible, but they did it. They overcame. How? by living by faith. If you decide to live by faith, I want you to notice that uh, you will see that everything about these people that live by faith was that many of them were imperfect, many of them were undignified, Many of them were unwanted. Some of them were rejected. Some of them weren't recognized. 
But you'll, you, you'll find some of them were scarred and wounded and crippled and battle weary and exhausted, but you'll find that they kept on going by faith. They didn't quit. And that, of course, you all know my saying, <laughs> I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. But hey, you get that if you read these people in this hall, God's hall of fame of faith and you read about them and you go study about them and you find out that, hey, they were just like we are. They were simply people, ordinary people, but as they lived by faith in God, they did extraordinary things. Come on now. They received the promises of God by living by faith. They preserved against, or persevered, I should say, against all obstacles, living by faith. Man, go study David. You talk about obstacles. You talk about situations. You talk about somebody that, wa that wasn't really qualified. But look what he was able to accomplish, and God called him a man after his own heart because he lived by faith, believing God. Israel lived by faith. You know, I'm going to read this and then I'll go on. The Moses raised his hand over the sea and the Lord opened a path through the water. And uh, so the people of Israel walked through in the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. That's the New Living Translation. Now, wait a minute. You've got to be, you got to have something. If you're going to walk down in the middle of a, of a, of a sea and you got walls of water on each side of you, come on now. And there's not, there, this water is just standing up. There's not a dam built across there. Come on, you're talking about living by faith, walking by faith. Come on now. I'll tell you what, I, that, you, got, you got to really believe in God if you're going to do that. Faith takes hold of the Word of God and declares what the Word of God has to say about your situation. I trust that you enjoyed the message, We Live by Faith. If you're going to make it in this world that we live in, you're going to have to know what the Word of God says, believe what the Word of God says, and receive what the Word of God says belongs to you as a believer. You know, honey, uh, I remember your dad. I mean, he taught on faith oh. lots and lots of times. And I know yeah, that, that... Lots of times. Yes, and <laughs> that we are emphasizing faith this month. Yeah. And, but he would say, you know, you need to hear it over and over and over again. Well, it says again. in Hebrews, without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's right. And I remember this one testimony of... Uh, he would tell this testimony of this man. He had heard a sermon on faith from your dad. This was, I think, the 50th time. And that night, this man said, Brother Hagen, after 50 times, I finally got it. We I finally, finally got, got it. it. Yeah. And you know, I said all that to say this, that our offer this month. Oh yeah, that's a great offer. Yes, uh, six CDs by your dad on the ABCs of Bible Faith. Yes. These are, uh, your dad had such a simple way. Of explaining uh -huh. it. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. And uh, this is one of my favorite uh, albums. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, What Faith Is, How Faith Comes, and How to Turn Your Faith. faith Loose. Loose, yeah. You know, even if you know what faith is, if you don't know how to turn that faith loose, that's right. It's not going to do you any good. Not so do any good. That is an awesome six CDs, and then uh, your CD, you can make a comeback. Yes. You know, sometimes we get really disappointed in yeah. things that happen, circumstances that happen right. in our life, and it's important to know that we can make a comeback. Yes. And you know, uh, this is a little minute. Well, it's a. Uh, 
a small book yeah. by your dad, the, uh, Training the Human Spirit, or yes. The Human Spirit is what it's called. Yeah, and we are spirit, soul, and body. Yes. And you have to recognize that. And this is some keys of how to develop that, the human spirit. Yes. And, and, and into the things that God says belongs to us. That's right. And in order so to hear remember, Him. Remember, that's for a gift of $35 or more, and you want to get this, especially Absolutely. this ABCs of Faith. That's I'm going right. to tell you that right now. Well, honey, coming up in two and a half weeks, oh my goodness, the summer is gone. It's time for school to start. Well, well school's, schools already, already been started. going. Some that's of them have been right. going since the middle of August. And guess what's coming up September the 22nd through the the 24th. Kindle the Flame <laughs> Women's Conference. Yes. And I stay out of the way. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Mean, once she gets in in, in Women's Conference uh -huh. mode, I just go to my study. I stay, because <laughs> she's so wrapped up in that yes. thing. And she's been talking about that all summer. She's been talking about, mm -hmm. about Kindle the Flame, her and my daughter Denise, they've been talking about it. They're the host of it. They've been talking about the, she's talking about her speakers that she has yes. and what all they got planned. It's going to really be great. It hey, guys, is. go to rhema.org and slash KTF and get your wife signed up and get her here because she will come back a different person. Absolutely. I can tell you that. Yes. So, you know, I, I've been hearing them talk about this, the, what's going to happen. It's going to be great. And you ladies don't want to miss it. But you guys, hey, you, you, you get your wife and you tell her, hey, look, we're going to let, we're going to send you off. I'm going to take care of everything else. And, and you go and enjoy this. And she'll be so shocked that you have planned it all. Yeah. Because, you know, usually I know ladies, <laughs> men are not planners, but I want to tell you what. Guys, if you want to make a special, special, you know, something for your wife. Yeah. You go and sign go her. Up. Go to rama.org slash KTF. Register right now. Yes. Go and, her. And, and get hotel reservations. Oh, that would and, be awesome. And uh, whatever else you need to do <laughs> to get her here. She will love it. Yeah. Well, coming up in October, October the 16th through the 18th, we're going to have a Living Faith Crusade in Sterling Heights, Michigan at Grace Christian Church. Pastors Jerry and Joy Wenzel. And then we're going to jump over to Travers. City, Michigan, yes. October 19th through the 21st, that's Wednesday mm -hmm. through Friday, at City Church yes. with Pastors Jody and Tanya Karsten. Hey, you want some details about it? Go to rhema.org and all the details are there. That's right. Well, honey, I think it's about time to get out of uh, here. It probably <laughs> is. <laughs> we want to thank all of you that are our partners and you help us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.